Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for April 24th through the 30th, 2023. So this is the last complete week of the month of April. And I just like to um, extend all of you the warmest welcome and gratitude um, for, you know, coming back every week. And I know that our the messages have been getting a little bit longer. <laughs> um, and but I hope that the information that's being shared with each and every one of us has been. A, um, incredibly enlightening as much as it has been for myself. Um, they've really been sort of helping to anchor and carry me through the process um, that I've been going through, you know, personally myself. And I thank many of you um, for your prayers. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to ask you to do that for me, um, to send any healing or prayers or just intentions um, that the universe and the angels um, can support me with in this um, incredible time of transition. So if you're new to our angelic wisdom community, welcome here. Um, and what I always invite everybody to do is to subscribe, make sure you're, you know, all notification bell is checked like dislike and leave comments um the comments are becoming more and more incredible um it is you know i it's it's just in, in, incredible what we all perceive from what has been said and it just completes um the message in such an in, incredible way so this is a, um, a cooperative process, right? Um, also, if you like to get an angel reading with me, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services. That link will be below. Um, all Anything that I mention will be in the description area below this video. So make sure you go there and check those links out. Um, it, you know, you can also sign up for the first time promotional offer reading if this is um, your first time having a reading with me. Um, also, if you just like to, um, you know, donate or make a contribution to the channel, um, I have a PayPal me link that's also in the description area as well. Um, I haven't started back up with the daily card messages. Um, I will sometimes soon. I've been doing like job applications and things like that and interviews. So um, that's what's been going on with that. Um, my, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm just um, working on some things and um, hopefully so that I can just um, diversify my um ability for income and to do just all the different things that I really enjoy. So, um, you know, teaching and, um, of course this work is at the heart of everything because it just, um, transformed my life. And, um, I want to get back into, you know, of course time for music or teaching, um, voice lessons and things like this, crystal healing. I would love to be able to really get back into that. So just a lot of different things I'm um, working on right now. And um, I will try to work on the um, monthly angel reading for May. And then at some point, probably in the beginning of May, um, work on the 12 zodiac readings, the angel scopes. So like the months just keep coming around very quickly. Um, so let's just go ahead now and take a deep breath. And just 
just center yourself in your heart space. And perhaps just allow yourself to feel the enormous love. I don't know why they keep writing song. Perhaps maybe a song comes to your heart as you tune in to your heart chakra. And whatever song comes to your heart, let that be sort of a, a message from your angels to you today. Or if you think of an album, I don't know why they're going with this. <laughs> I don't know where they're going with this. But <laughs> um, yeah. And they're writing the word office. So I don't know if, um, you know, so I never walk around the city without music um, headphones. And I, I listen to Bach mainly um, because it just turns on everything for me. You know, joy, it, it, um, it just makes me feel incredible. So I, I always listen to it. And, and for me, Bach's music, even if it's, um, he's talking about, if it's something that's, you know, um, of an intense emotion or, or a light and joyful emotion or strife and struggle. It's just the way that the music is um, composed always offers this incredible hope, this incredible light. You know, it's as if he, he says, yeah, I, I see where you are. But remember that, you know, there's opportunity in everything and that God and the angels are with you. I mean, it's just always in the music. There's never an absence. Um, there's some music where it just goes into the feelings and, you know, you, you may relive something that was heart-wrenching. Um, but with Bach... You can go through that experience, but it's always with the light. So that's, for me, why I listen to it. But, you know, I always have, you know, walking through the city. So there might be a need to really sort of um, be aware of the music that touches your soul or that resonates with your soul in some way to sort of um, bring you back from the from the brink of anything that could be um, incredibly negative. So even in between meetings in your office, maybe you might want to really um, have a tune that you can just even sing in your head um, while you're sitting in a situation that may be uncomfortable, that may be full of triggers. Um, so there's a sense of really needing to be um, proactive in this week in terms of other people's stuff, right? And um, it's hard when you're the one that's on the receiving end of people's stuff. Just <laughs> um, and what we got to understand is that it's not personal. That's very hard for us to understand that it's not personal, that people are going through things, they're struggling, the, the frequencies that are sort of um, working with our planet to help us to shift, to release, to release things, right? So it's almost like a feeling of, um, you know, there's a time, there's a sense of time, there's a sense of like we're all being um, called or summoned to wake up, right? And so it's like somebody keeps knocking on your door or an alarm clock keeps going off or somebody's tapping on your shoulder trying to get your attention. And you're, and most people are in such a deep, 
sleep of the ego that any um any intensity of the light is triggering for them and they many people are in in a, an intense resistance to this call to this uh, call to be alert to be awake now of course you might feel as though you are awake and the thing about life is that all relationships is a relationship with yourself and so though you and i might feel like we're really awake and we're, we're aware of all of this and you're sitting here going yeah yeah barry i get what you're saying totally oh my god but we're not done with either <laughs> you know there are there are aspects of our work although we've worked hard there's still things for us to become aware of to be alert about there's no one who's getting it getting off easy there's nothing about oh well i always do my homework i always turn in my stuff on time you know so don't i deserve a pass right now no because the thing that we must not understand is that the universe is all based on equality it is never we may have created inequalities but the universe did not create them and the universe does not uphold them either the universe always creates a it always creates a balance so it's always balancing the scales. And that's where the karma comes in. Um, that's where this, you know, sort of law of reflection is coming in. Because even though we may feel like we're perfect, the universe always, not in judgment, not saying, uh-huh, now I got you. No. It just put in place a law. It put in place sort of a software that runs all of these spiritual laws to maintain this balance, this equality, because we're loved the same. But what we are all in, we're all in different classrooms, and from your perspective, through our ego, it might look like that person's classroom is worse than mine, or this classroom is better than mine. But the thing is, is that within each classroom, everything in that class for that soul is in balance, the proportion of what is experienced, what is reflected based on what is projected is all in proportion to whatever is being offered or however someone receives what is being offered. And so we're all in our own classroom experiencing equality in terms of karma or cause and effect, the polarities, all of that is all in balance. The challenges that we experience are in proportion to whatever we are putting out there, whatever our belief systems are. It's the most fair system of all. And they're writing energy in front of me. And it's just all about energy. It's all about energy. And I feel like what they're trying to say about that is, and they write the word esteem. So 
your self-esteem, in a sense, wherever level you find yourself in any given moment in terms of self-esteem is the energy that is now being reflected as well as projected. And what we really need to focus on is releasing the energy that is holding the energy down. So, you know, negative emotions feel really heavy in our hearts. When you think about that, the, the, the scales of ma'at with the feather and the heart, you know, the idea is that to make sure your heart is always as light as a feather. Because the positive emotions make us feel, our hearts feel light. Like it's just floating on the top of the, the surface of the water. But that heavy, dense, negative emotions or energy is like trying to hold that very light air filled ball under the water. When you try to hold it under the water, it becomes intense, heavy. But one thing, it never wants to stay there. It's fighting you to go back to the top, to be light. And that's what pain and suffering is. Pain and suffering is a cry for you to let go not to dig in your heels and fight, not to dig in your heels and try to be right, not to dig in your heels and try to make others feel like they're wrong, not for you to feel ashamed or guilty that's not what it wants you to do. The pain and the suffering, the emotional negativity is a cry for you to let it go. Let the ball go. Let whatever is in your heart, let that heaviness in your heart go. And that's why forgiveness is such an incredible tool in lightening up your heart from the heaviness. I don't know why they're doing this, but they're, they're writing the word sex. So, you know, some people deal with this. I know I've dealt with it around my sexuality, and I'm sure many people who are no matter what their sexuality is, they deal with it. You know, I was just talking to someone who felt like, you know, she had an incredible experience sexually with someone, but felt that it was um, a sin because the person's not married, yet the person's, you know, nearing their 70s and, and, and feeling this way. And many people do. But that emotion is telling you to let that go, to release that, and to focus on joy. Now, your, your body, the, the sex is meant for pleasure and joy and bliss. There are many wonderful, beautiful feelings that make you feel light, and afterwards, you feel very light. You feel like you've released an incredible heaviness. It's as if this is similar, but not as, well, this is similar to that, but not as great as that. But exercising makes you feel as really, really, really light. So you can, instead of focusing on making yourself feel ashamed or guilty, focus on the joy 
and let the joy inform you about who and what situations would be appropriate for you. You know, if you want it, if you really believe that, then just not make it about not having sex, but make it about the opportunity that would be the right time for you that would um, create the environment of joy for you. But without that belief, if you get where I'm going with that. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but they just brought it up. And I think it's very important not to, first of all, to withhold from ourselves things that were, were given to us as gifts. Anything, everything that has been given to us was given as a gift and in this, with the purest intention. This planet, our talents, everything that we've contributed to one another through that pure, open-hearted generosity of God, we have done so many things, but we have a mind of duality and we can either choose to take something that's beautiful and misappropriated or or not and so it is it we have to pay attention to this because this creates a, a, an experience of energy that you need to only pay attention to how it resonates within you and you have to discern it based on your heart. Don't put beliefs that create heaviness in your heart is what I'm trying to get at. There, focus on the beliefs that lighten your heart. Be at peace with, make sure that your choices offer you true peace, not some kind of peace that is based on, well, okay, I'm, I'm hoping that I won't be damned or I'm, I'm hoping that everybody else sees me as morally perfect because there's nothing about this universe that was really meant to be perfect. It was, there is an imperfection and, and built into it so that we could have the opportunity to explore free will. So you got to get up off your back. If somebody used to say a long time, a little bit, get up, get up off your back a little bit. The classroom that you're in is going to keep ricocheting if you th thought the object of being in the class was to be perfect. Absolutely not. It is already imperfect, but it's in balance. Because it would work with your free will. It's flexible to work with your free will, but other things were put in place so that you could say, ooh, that was a good idea, but I need to tweak that a little bit. Or... Ooh, definitely don't want to do that one again. So let's start, let's move on. Let's let that go. Let's not make issues for ourselves, meaning let's not make karma. Because as soon as you make an issue out of something, you create karma. Meaning, because what you're doing is you're not taking the good with the bad. You're not taking the, you're not learning the lesson and leaving the rest. You're not taking out the, the wisdom that's there for you and, and leaving the rest aside. As soon as you just only think to yourself, oh my God, I wasn't perfect. I wasn't perfect. I was bad. I was guilty. I was wrong. Then bam. Now this becomes a belief. These thoughts turn into other types of beliefs that weighs your heart down. And the karma is that it can't stay because this is not the 
this is not why your heart was created. And it is not. It, those feelings tell you a different story about who you truly are as a divine being. And that lie can never be allowed to, um, to remain. And so now comes more classrooms in that same lesson to repeat and repeat and repeat until you give up the ghost, meaning you give up that lie. Because you have to understand that you are an extension of the source. You, your soul, is a part of its body, like a cell in your body. And you cannot hold that lie while being one with the source that gave you life, and that is your life. You cannot be allowed to hold that lie because if it, if it was allowed, then you, the, the source itself would then have to become that lie. And it's not going... It's like in your body, every time some foreign um, virus or bacteria comes into your body that shouldn't be there, it goes to get rid of it, to remove that lie because the body is was made to heal. It was made to always be in attuned or attuned with its creator and source. So we're in our classrooms. It feels very unfair. I'm telling you, I know it feels unfair. I'm going through it, but it's all in proportion to whatever we've offered or whatever we've chosen to perceive. And if we got stuck in either one of those, then it created a lesson, a belief that is not in alignment with the truth. And then it is our job to release that burden on the heart, to release that belief and to allow ourselves to be restored to the truth so we can float right back up to the top of the, the surface of the water and float, be light and float and bubble around and without, you know, and, and I love this idea of the ball because it's just so protected, so fragile, but yet protected on the top of the surface of that water. It'll just bounce, bounce, bounce. It'll bounce off of any surface. You know, if it hits anything, It'll bounce off of it. If it hits a rock, it'll just bounce off of it. And that is what we have to do because that's telling us that we remember that we are truly divine and that we are in this world, as they were saying, but not of it. But we're here. And we know how to be here and we know the rules and we know and we're okay with the rules. We're going to stop trying to fight the rules. Okay. And um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to recommend it again. <laughs> this book by Dinah Cooper, A Little Light on the Spiritual Laws. I'm not going to say anything else about it. I'm just going to show it to you from time to time. Get the book. <laughs> If you want to, to um, you know, do a little study with the book, like a study group, we can do that. Okay, but get the book because <laughs> you need to know all the rules before you play any game, right? Or any, if you join, you become a member of anything, you need to know what the rules are. You need to know what the law, the bylaws, right? The policies. If you join a company, you need to know what they are. You can't, you know, play fairly or function um, um, to your p true potential and to do your best without knowing what's expected of you or knowing how things work. And then 
in this in in those cases whether you would not, whether that's going to work for you or not but these spiritual laws are universal and so it doesn't matter what you and i might complain about but this is not fair blah 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 because we're doing that from this system of beliefs that our ego has set up and our entire world created the systems that we're all pushing against right now from that tiny little ego on a very collective level that we need to let go. As soon as we let it go, our hearts will lighten and we will be able to understand how to keep our hearts light and to keep our classrooms in order, meaning that we don't struggle with our classes. We don't, we first of all, nobody's asking us to be perfect in our classrooms. And just think about that. If you say to yourself, I'm, I don't need to be perfect, then there's no reason for you to feel guilty when you make a mistake, right? There's no reason for you to get upset with somebody else when they have a bad day and they say something wrong that might, that's, feels hurtful but if it's not about being perfect if you're not having to be perfect and you're not expecting them to be perfect then you can keep moving along and not create karma so that you and that person have to come back and do that again or and some karma is not like oh coming back in another lifetime it's like coming back the next day and doing it all over again because a lot of what happens in our jobs, in our offices, in our homes, is that we keep perpetuating that thing because we are actually expecting perfection from everybody, ourselves and them. And then they make that mistake again and you go off on board again. And they do it again and they go and they react to you the same way, and over and back and forth. And, blah, 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 blah. and it's just a load of crap. And the archangel that's coming through is Archangel Uriel the angel of peace. And so our focus right now in that classroom, now think about this, the laws of polarity. So if you're in a classroom of chaos right now, if the energy they're writing is chaotic, turbulent, whatever, the polarity that you need to move towards is peace, but ultimately balance. And they're writing the way, the way towards peace is resignation, self-resignation, they add. And they wrote it in tiny letters. And it, that, that means to me, the little self. Your ego and also your inner child. So I've been doing a lot of this and um, gosh, I'm not, because it's all on my phone and I'm using my phone to record, but there's this Hawaiian prayer uh, Hopo Ono, I'm sorry, I'm not saying it right. I'm the kind of person, if I can't see it, and I can't see the spelling, I can't say it. But please, there's no disrespect. Um, it's not my intention. But if you look it up online, and there is, um, and I'm going to try to put the link in the description after the video. But it's a doctor something you you lin or something like this is it's not correct either but i'm going to put it there and i'm going to find the one i stumbled upon somebody gave me a video and then i stumbled upon another one where it was actually the person who um this was all kind of presented by it originally at least um in on youtube or the spiritual community i'm sure it's been this is something that's very ancient in the culture so but he talks you this video, this, he talks you through how to talk to the inner child, to stroke its head gently, its shoulders and 
you know, asking it to, for, you know, to forgive you um, for, for, you know, to say you're sorry. The, the, the prayer is, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And he, the, the, the prayer, some of the prayers on YouTube, they just repeat this over and over again. That was very powerful the first time I did it. If my, the heat in my body will, but with this, it got a little bit more personal, meaning more intimate when you were literally talking to the child and stroking its head and wherever you felt pain in the body to ask it to, you know, um, you know, to say, I, I don't know what it's about and I don't need to know what it's about, but I'm so sorry for, um, whatever you may have absorbed or what you've taken on. And sometimes in my inner child will write the words to me about what it is. And so I just do this and it's so profoundly healing. And that's what the self resignation is about because we have to forgive ourselves for what we offer knowingly or unknowingly and what we perceive knowingly and unknowingly. And the beliefs, because these beliefs lodge into this, the, uh, the soul in such a way that they are so erroneous that the, the soul, the purity of the soul is, is sort of like a, a, a screamer <laughs> screaming, eh, you know, like, cause, cause it's like an alarm that doesn't belong here. Got to go. That doesn't belong here. Trying to get your attention. So what we feel is like this pain in our heart or, you know, like our hearts are heavy or we feel pain in the body that we just don't even understand because we've numbed out so much. But then the pain body goes, OK, come on, let's give it to him here. Get him to him here to point it out. And we just keep ignoring. Start talking to your inner child. You're going to learn a lot. And I resisted this for years and years and years, you know, <laughs> um, the thing is, and again, this is not about being perfect. It's not. There's nothing perfect about any process of healing. We don't have to do it perfectly. The universe is has our backs, as one of my um, mentors used to say, um, Kim Sear, she would always remind us that, don't worry, the universe has your back. So we would, you know, doing medical um, medical mediumship, and she'd be like, "Don't worry, they got your back." You know, the intent is what the universe cares about, and what it reads, and what it answers. And you're writing, "Yes, yes, yes." So resignation to all this perfectionism, resignation to so many things. Just let it go. Let it go. All right. And so he says, come into harmony and balance. That's your focus. How can I come into harmony and balance? Because they're writing, he's writing in front of me, equality. Until you resign yourself, you practice self-resignation, you will find it hard to achieve true peace and let me just emphasize this you are already at peace your soul is already at peace about everything just because and just like god is already at peace with you he's not waiting to judge you quote unquote, not waiting for that. He's already at peace with you. He's waiting for you to resign this concept of yourself that tries to function outside of peace, and all the laws that are based upon equality. If you see inequality, you 
are outside of that place of peace. And he's, and he's writing in front of me, I am, you remember what we talked about this last week? It's either I am or am I? And you say, wait, come on. I go to my job and these people, people are being treated, mistreated. That, that's injustice. Okay, I get you because I don't get it either as I'm hearing this. However, what I'm getting a feeling is, is if you affirm equality, if you affirm equality, that you know in truth, that's like saying, I am confidence versus am I doubt. When you affirm that you know there is equality, then you will see the solutions to make that come about if it is your purpose, your call to do so. Because there are things that you see that what you're really watching, number one, is somebody in their classroom. Remember what we said about that? They're in their classroom everything is in is proportionate to whatever it is they're offering or perceiving that is equality so that is what they first mean if you see inequality you are forgetting to see the truth which is you're watching a lesson in a classroom where everything is spiritually balanced in that classroom doesn't matter if you don't like it or not. No one is in something, some classroom that they did not create. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray for them to see that or try to help them if they are ready to see that. You might just need to be there as a support, just a presence holding your peace so that they can see that, so they can at least feel safe for a moment when you are in their presence or knowing that you are there as, their, as a friend or as a colleague who is in a profound place of peace, some place where they want to be. That is enormously incredible and a great thing, work that you can do to help shift the imbalance or the inequality that, that you see, that you are witnessing. Okay, so the first card for the beginning of the week, the lover's card. And so I just quickly get, this is about the writing energy, making sure that your choices are in alignment with the energy that would offer you peace. Take your time, breathe. Don't think about rushing or trying to fix something. First, get in balance with the lesson in your classroom. And then let that situation show you the path of peace to bring it back into equality. You have the four of pentacles. So this is simply telling us, reserve your energy, conserve, preserve, set boundaries, healthy boundaries around your energy. Don't give your energy away this week. And that's going to probably be one of the most difficult things. When we take it personally, when we believe in the equality and all that other stuff, and we feel guilty, when we allow our hearts to be heavy, you are giving away your power. That's what the heaviness in your heart or however it's affecting your health, it's because you are giving away your power. You're believing in the injustice or inequality. Not to say it's not happening 
as you see it, but you still have to believe in the truth. And they've given us sort of a, um, an outline of how to understand the truth by simply understanding it's a classroom and the, the, every classroom is balanced and in proportion to whatever has been offered or perceived. And you have to find a way to work with the laws of equality. You have the self, self resignation. Nothing is perfect on purpose. Release that. And then how can you be present in the way that makes a difference? That truly is going to make a difference. All right, so we have the Empress here. And so this is about taking care of yourself, I feel, in this context of energy this week. Take care of yourself and take care of those whom you love. And remember, you have to first love everyone because you first want to see them in their truth, that they are all divine children of God, source. And they're writing the word ego. So this means this is higher perspective. We have to go to the higher perspective in order to unburden our hearts. In order to unburden our hearts so that they can be light again. You can't heal and I'm not saying you can't, but you won't feel as though you were healed. When I do this, or when I have my client sessions, or any healing, I am healed when I, as I am healing them. That's equality. That's when you know that you were meant to be present in that person's journey home to peace. So you got to be careful about nurturing when you keep getting knocked down or you keep uh, being hurt or your body is depleted because you're trying to help some, you're trying to heal someone as though you're the healer. Again, as my mentor Kim C has said to us, is not your fault if your client heals. Therefore, it's not your fault if your client doesn't heal. It's not your fault if your loved one chooses to not forgive you or to be hurt by, by you or to be hurt. You know, they have to recognize this is the wake up call. We have to wake up and recognize that we have to stop taking on energy that is just burdening our souls and our hearts. All right, the card from I already pulled from the bottom of the deck is the Action of Wands. This is the Knight of Wands, okay? And so I feel like don't rush into situations without really being clear about whether or not you can legitimately help if it's you're meant to by the writing spirit. Ask spirit if you are meant to be a part of their lesson and their classroom like an angel, are you supposed to be there? Because see, the angels know the laws of free will and they can intercede when it is a part of the plan, but they can't if for some reason, this is something you are meant to do on your own or if it would interfere with your process that is actually leading to that healing, that revelation, so to speak. 
So focus on what it is you are called to do. And this is how you will start to feel safe in your body, in your world, in your life, etc. All right, so I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful, beautiful week. God bless you.